Hi guys. So what we're going to do today is we're going to really sort of combine everything that we've learned in Illustrator into this last assignment for Illustrator. Can you believe that um, we're almost done? Oh my goodness. Uh, that went by so quick, didn't it? Um, I know it can be difficult to pick up all these things in such a short um, semester, um, but uh, hopefully, you know, you've had a little extra time to sort of mess around in both Photoshop and Illustrator and uh, are coming out with at least a little bit better understanding on how to utilize these uh, programs uh, than you started. So um, our next assignment for this week is going to be to create flats. Um, and make them colored and utilize the stripes and prints and, and plaids that we created in the previous week um, into flats. So we're gonna sort of break it up and I'm going to start with the uh, stripes and plaids um, and then we're gonna go into the prints. And the prints are actually gonna be pretty easy because we've already created the pattern repeat for them. Um, so let's get started with our flats. I'm gonna pop on over to Illustrator and here are my uh, plaids and prints, um, I'm sorry, plaids and stripes. And um, I actually uh, did not save my Illustrator version of these guys, so I had to make them again really quickly. Um, so hopefully that didn't happen to you. Hopefully you saved your Illustrator version uh, because unfortunately you can't use the JPEG version um, to create a pattern fill for a few reasons. One, what the first step we're going to do is we're going to reduce the size of these guys. So we're gonna shrink them down pretty small um, to make the pattern repeat. And this is because when we go into our flats, so when we make fabric swatches like this, we're assuming that these are real size. So they're 100%. So this is the actual real size of the stripes. However, I have some flat examples here. So I just made these uh, you can use the flats that you have made already. Um, you're going to have to do three different garments. So you're going to have to make at least one new one. But if you want to use the ones that you've done already, that's perfectly fine. Um, and we're going to fill them in with, um, a you're going to have one for a stripe, one for a plaid, and one for a print. Um, so, you know, whatever you like. You don't have to do them, you know, different. You can do them all skirts or all shirts or... However you want to do them, just make sure they're done by you um, and they're your own unique design. Anywho, but um, what I was getting at is you can see that these are really kind of small. These are not actual size. They're not actual size drawings of the stripes, uh, or I'm sorry, of the garments. So to get an accurate stripe onto these flats, we're going to have to shrink it down. If I were to use these exact ones they'd be way too big right because um they're for us so think about you know how big these would be on us these would be absolutely gigantic you'd have like room for one giant stripe down these pants so we're gonna have to make them a little bit smaller to fit on the flats because the flats themselves of course are smaller so hopefully that makes sense so uh, what we did with the stripes and plaids is we just made these swatches. We didn't make them into a pattern repeat yet. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So to do that, I'm actually going to work on my and, and sort of a, a clean space. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new one just just to work on it. Um, I like I don't like things to get too cluttered. You can do this on, on your own thing, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just make a new document just just to make the print repeats I'm sorry the stripe repeats so I'm going to start here with my pink and I'm going to copy and paste it into my new um, file here now like I said I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down for my repeat so I'm going to hold shift remember shift is going to constrain our proportions and our flats are, you know, we're going to do it probably a quarter of the size. You can even go in a little bit smaller. And there we are. And then I can make this into my repeat. Now it's pretty small, but that's okay. I'm going to select everything and go to Object, Pattern, Make. Now for stripes, we're going to want that grid pattern. Okay, thank you for letting me know. And um, depending on how you have your um, stripes placed, 
in your pattern repeat, you might need to adjust. So if there is like a little bit of unevenness on one side or the other, you might need to just adjust it a little bit. Um, mine look pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in and just double check. Now it's looking pretty even. It looks like maybe right here, it's a little bit bigger than the other ones. Um, but that's fine because what I can do is I can adjust the width. So I'm going to bring in the width just a little bit. And now it looks pretty even. And I'm getting a little bit of this here too. So remember um, how we got rid of that in the last assignment was I'm going to make the um, vertical height of the tiling a little bit smaller. Should go ahead. I still have a little bit there. So I'm gonna go in and, and really zoom in and see what's causing that. And it might be a little bit that this orange, these orange guys are a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna adjust them a little bit and maybe make my blue line a little longer. Okay, that helped the first one, so I'll just go ahead and do that to all of them. So shrink down my orange and extend my blues, making sure we're going to get that nice seamless transition between our repeats. And that looks pretty good, looks pretty seamless. So I'm going to save a copy, okie dokie, okie dokie, and I'm done. Okay. So that's gonna pop up in our swatches. So let's go find it. And I'm going to make a swatch shape that's filled with my stripe repeat. So let's go ahead and I'll click on it. All right, it's in my fill. Boom, there we go. Now what I wanna do is I wanna copy this and bring it over into my flats. Now I have my flats on um, a few different layers. And I think what I'm going to do is, so we're going to do a stripe, a print, and a plaid. So I'm going to create a new document for each one. Uh, you don't need to do this. You can do it all in the same one. That's fine. As you can see, I'm kind of get a little new document crazy if you don't like as many tabs open. But I just like kind of keeping things separate and organized. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and the first, we're going to do stripes. So I'm going to paste this guy that I copied from my other one here. And you can see as soon as I did that, my swatch for my stripe is in here. So, okay, that's fantastic. I'll move it around here. I don't really need it. I just need it as sort of a, a, my fill. I might wanna go ahead and grab my color palette too, because I might want to add some solid color areas to my flats that aren't just, um, uh, plaids, prints, or stripes, and I'll just shrink them down because I don't need it to be too big. Have it out here, and let's go to my flats. And um, okay, they're not locked. Let's do the pants as stripes. So I'm going to bring that over into this one right here, and I'm going to uh, since we're going to do three colorways warm, cool, and neutral. I'm gonna go ahead and paste them in three times. If I need to adjust the size, that's fine, but I'm gonna try to avoid that um, simply because I wanna keep all my flats the same pro size proportionately. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ungroup and then just kinda rearrange I'm going to shift this guy up and over, shift the back view a little bit closer. So we'll have room. I can do that for the rest of them. So this actually I am going to group now since they're... Now I could do that to the other ones, but um, now that I've resized this one, I'm just, or repositioned this one, I'm just going to paste the re-adjusted one. So one, two, and one more, and they can all fit on the same page. And maybe we'll bring these in just a 
just a little closer together. You can overlap them too. It's not that big a deal. I'm not a big fan of overlapping because I feel like you get lost detail and people can make mistakes more than they can make it benefit them. Um, but if you want to overlap little bits of your flats, you can. Um, if you are going to overlap, just make sure that nothing pertinent like this amount of overlap is fine. That is fine. Doesn't matter. But like that's too much because now you're covering important details. So don't go crazy with the overlapping. Avoid it if you can. But a little bit is fine if you're having sizing issues. Now let's just regroup those guys again. Okay. So now what I want to do is make another layer. These guys are going to get on their own layer, their layer one, and I'm going to lock them and create a new layer. And in this sense, I'm actually going to put it below layer one. Okay. Now I'm going to do this because most of my lines here were done with an invisible fill, um, like I recommended you do in the original flat video. Now I'm going to color these in. Um, they're going to be stripes. I might do a little solid color right up here, maybe for the pockets and the waistbands, some solid colors at the at top, but the legs are definitely going to be striped. So what I want to do is come over here and place my um, stripe pattern into my fill by clicking on the swatch. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my pants, grab my pen tool, and just outline the areas that I want to be striped. Now my stroke or my outline is still black and what I'll probably do at the end is make it invisible. And again, just go ahead and fill in. And since this layer, we created this layer underneath the layer with um, our flats on it, we are not losing any of the detail, any of those little lines, any of the top stitching, anything else. So easy peasy, right? And if you've ever rendered stripes by hand, um, you can definitely see why this is a lot easier, okay? I'm just gonna make sure that it's looking clean. And I'm gonna zoom in a little farther to do, I think what I'll do is I'll do the side of the waistband with the stripes. <clears throat> now, if I wanted those stripes to go horizontally, I'd have to make a, another um, print repeat fill which I kind of want to do because I kind of want these to be horizontal. Well, let me finish up the back anyways. And just clean this up. This was, oops. Getting a little bit off the line right here, so I'm just gonna clean that up just a wee bit. And let me do the back. Now I believe the pockets have a white fill, and that's fine, I'll just change them to a solid color once I'm finished. And let me get that stroke. There we go. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab these pockets, which are on layer one, so I gotta to remember to unlock layer one. And they're grouped, so I gotta ungroup it. But once I've done that, I can grab these guys, and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill them in. What do you guys think, blue or pink? I think maybe blue. I 
can pick any color, it doesn't matter, but let's see what they look. Yeah, blue looks cute. A little bit more of a detail. Oh, I lost my dotted line, so I gotta get that back. Sometimes it'll, so when you um, use the eyedropper tool, it will also give you the same line and stroke. So sometimes if that's not what you want, you gotta change it back. But easy enough. Alrighty. Actually, I kinda want these areas to be the same blue. So while we're in here, let's go back to my layers and I'm, I'm done changing that on layer one. So I'm gonna lock that and work on layer two again. I'm gonna make these guys blue too. That might be kind of cute. Just to keep it a little clean, I'm going to change the stroke to invisible. It's not, if you're clean, neat, it does not going to make too much of a difference, but it just can kind of clean it up a little bit so you don't have two outlines. Okay. I think I'll do this blue up here. Maybe the button's pink. That look, would look cute. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the buttons because they're already there that I did to the pockets. So I'm gonna unlock layer one so I'm able to select them. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make them pink from my color palette over here. Beep. Nice. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do is I wanna do stripes on the rest of the waistband, but like I said, I wanna make them um, horizontal. Now, unfortunately, there isn't gonna be a way to do it with this fill. Um, we are gonna have to alter it. So I'm gonna come here to this guy, double click, and remember that's gonna open up our pattern editor. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select everything in here and turn it to the side. There we go. And we're getting a little bit of a line right there. So let's zoom in. Let's try to, I'm going to squish it first in width and hopefully that will get rid of the line. No. So instead, let's see, it looks like maybe the blue and the, we're getting that chunk there that's open. So both the blue and the orange pieces are gonna need to be elongated just a wee bit. So we're getting a nice smooth transition. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that's made nice transition in the orange. We're not getting a gap in the orange anymore. Let's do the same for the blues. Okay, perfect. Okay. So now we have a horizontal version as well as a vertical version. Ha, oops. And did it take away my vertical version? Oh yeah, all right, well. That's okay, because I still have, I can just highlight both these guys 
and use my clever little swatch down here. Oh, change that one too. Huh. Okay. Anywho. Then we're going to just uh, go back to here. See, this is also why I like to use many different windows. When uh, uh, Illustrator decides to change something on you without your approval, you can go back and fix it. Okie dokie. Now we're going to go back to our horizontal and use that to fill in the rest of our waistband. Oops. I am not working on the right layer. Shame on me. It's not going to fill in because it switched back to uh, a nil fill, but that's okay. I can get the shape in and then fill it with our pattern. Why is it so big? Is it so big? Yeah, it is. Oh no, it just seems kind of big. Is it any smaller? No, it's no different. Oh well. So be it. Looks wider. I guess it isn't wider. Hmm? You can always make it smaller in the pattern repeat. Not that I really want to, because I want it to be the same stripe, but... You can. At least we're getting a better stripe placement. And I'll just go ahead and do it over here too. Then you have to. And there we are. So there is my first colorway. And um, I, I, seeing that I got a little zealous in um, laying out my uh, flats, um, because it is going to be much easier now that I've created all those things for me to just copy paste and change the fill of my original. But at least I know where all of my things should be mapped out, so it's gonna help me in that way. So I'm gonna put this over to the side, and I'm gonna get rid of these other guys right here by unlocking my first layer. And again, I'm just going to now grab this guy and paste him in. down here as well. And we'll go ahead and do our other colorways. Okay, so um, again, it's, I might not do all of our colorways because it's gonna get a little bit repetitive, but I'm definitely gonna do my cool. So we're gonna go back to my stripes and I'm gonna grab my cool colorway. copy it, 
bring it into where I was working on. And, and it's important to get how small my stripes were. So that's also why I have this and I'm keeping it because I want all my stripes to be the same size. So these, these were the same size stripes before. So now that I have this little guy here, I know, and I can even create a new layer to make sure. So let's put him on a new layer. Lock this guy. Um, so now I can shrink them down to the exact same size as my pink swatch. And I can do that just by looking here and making sure that they are now the same size. Okay, so working really well. Um, and then of course, now I can grab this guy and make my print, my pattern repeat. Okay, same thing. Um, I'm gonna start by squishing it down a little bit. Squishing it into and down. And let's just extend some of these guys. What are it's the orange that we're really getting a little bit, or pink I should say, that we need to extend that by. Okay, there we go. Looking good, looking fluid. Set it as the stroke. Oh, that's it. It set it as the stroke, and I was being silly. It just was hard to see because it looked so much like the pink one. Okay, so let's copy this and bring it on over to our flats. Oh, not our flats. Our untitled five. And again, there it is. It's going to pop up, and you can see now that all the real hard work, even though the, this wasn't really that hard. Um, but it is already done because what I'm going to do is grab these guys and simply switch. Okay, I am going to need to create a new um, horizontal striped swatch for this, but we'll just do that real quick. It look, doesn't even look like I need to do it. Say copy and then okay. So we have another one, okay. And then I'm gonna cancel because I wanna keep both. Yes, I was able to keep both, excellent. So let's grab these guys and fill them with this. Okay, excellent. And um, we're going to also change, what should these be? Should these be pink now? What do you guys think? Maybe they should be pink. Oops. Not to select those guys. Oh, no matter. Because I will we'll have to. Well, one little frustrating thing. I am gonna have to go back and put my dash line back in. But if I had 
had selected properly, that probably wouldn't have even happened. And let's make these ones blue. That's pretty cute. Or maybe we should make them purple. Make more sense if they were purple. Let's make them purple. Okay, so there's our warm, there's our cool. Ooh, I want to make them purple. There we go. And of course, then I would just copy, I've already done that, and do the same thing for our neutral colorway. But of course, like I said, um, I don't want this to be too long and too boring. And since I've done all of the um, examples before, let's move on. Um, of course, I'm gonna want to save. So if I'm not done, and I'm not done because I still have to do my other colorway, I'm gonna save as an AI, right? Because that's gonna save my layers, it's gonna save my paths, my objects, my swatches, everything. And so this, I'm not naming it the proper thing because again, this is gonna be just for me, just an AI version. You're only going to go to file, Whoa. export, and export as a JPEG um, when you're finally finished. Uh, with your project. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and get a new one for our um, plaids. And I'm not gonna do this all the way through because this is gonna be a lot like the um, stripes. So I don't want it to be too boring just going over the same thing again. Um, but let's do our plaid on the shirt. So I'm gonna get that and bring it over into here. And I might say, oh, you have so much more room, let's make it bigger. Don't make it bigger, because remember, they were all made on the same um, croquis. And the shirt simply is smaller than the pants. It's, it's meant to be. And you don't want a really big shirt and really tiny pants or anything like that. So I'm going to do probably two repeats um, from for my plaid because um, I would like a, just a normal repeat and then maybe a bias cut one too that I can do on the yoke or, or something fancy. Um, so let's start with my pink and again it's pretty much the same as before. I'm going to bring it into this same file that I was working on because just like with um, the other ones I want to make sure that I'm going to shrink it down the same size as I did before. So that looks pretty good. Okie dokie. Bring it out over here. And it's all selected already, so I can go to Object. Now again, this is going to want to be a grid for the standard pattern. And like anything else, any other pattern, it's gonna take a few little, uh, um, you know, touches up. So I'm going to start by sort of squishing it in to get rid of some of those lines. And looks like I'm going to have to maybe adjust the blue lines as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. I got to maybe just stretch it out here. Is it all not going to be nice to me? Oh, I did a good job. Well, let's see. Okay, I'm going to reduce the orange just maybe a wee bit. this guy down just a bit too. Remember these are two layered on top of each other. Let's bring this one back up. Yeah, 
turn that orange down there. Just the orange a little bit smaller. And the blues a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to say that's okay. And that does need a few more tweaks. Let's try to... doesn't like to ungroup this. I could always apply the um, opacity again, but for our intents and purposes, that's going to be just fine. It's nice and even. And when I zoom out, I can't really see the, the little hiccups, so it should be okay. So copy, and done. Okay, so we have that. Okay, excellent. Now I'm going to attempt to make... diagonal one too, a bias cut one. So let's see. Let's grab everything and angle it. Now in this instance, I'm going to try to hex it. See what looks closest. See if we can adjust this a little bit closer. All right, all right. Bring it in back in a little bit. Now essentially if I really wanted to do this properly, I would go ahead and make its own thing in here and um, it would be a lot easier. <laughs> um, but uh, since I'm using this, I'm just trying to adapt it and it's a little trickier. Let's make this a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. 
Mm, a little too big. Okay. So this is actually pretty close. I'm looking for width. I maybe shrink it in a wee bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, there are a little bit of the gaps here, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Again, I don't think the um, area of my shirt is going to be even big enough for that to really make too much of a difference. Um, but I can always go in and adjust my little lines to try to match it up better. Um, but at actual size, let's see, it's not going to be too big of a deal. So let's save a copy. And I want both. There it is. So now I'm going to cancel because I don't want all my other ones to switch. Okay, so let's fill two swatches and bring them over. And I would like you to be filled with this, please. Thank you very much. And let's do another one. Maybe a little bit. Maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh well. You know how to fix it if you want to. But I doubt you want to see me fidget with little lines for a million years. And that one filled in quite nicely. Okay, so let's grab these guys and bring them on over. And so we have both of them now in here. So I can go ahead and create lock this layer, create a new layer, and fill it in how I want. So I want to use this guy maybe on the collar and the yoke and the rest, or maybe I can even do it like in here, make like a interesting pattern. This and this, I would like this. And I can't see any of my details because my layer is not correctly ordered. So I made a new layer for this. I'm gonna just, I think I want the collar too, so I'm just gonna go all the way up. But that's okay. I can simply drag it underneath. Um, but again, you can see how it gets a little tricky because what you are trying to trace over gets filled. So I'm just going to drop that underneath. There we go. And we see that now all of my details and little buttons and everything are uh, visible. Okay, fantastic. So now let's use the other fill. for the sides. Now as a pattern maker, I'd say, why would you put the bias on the inside with the button packet? The button packet's gonna be way easier to make on the length grain than it is on the bias grain. Why would you do that? But it looks cool, so. I'm going to quiet the part of my brain that actually thinks about construction and not design, although they are pretty, pretty paired. And again, let's remember that we don't have to do extra work if we don't need to. Anything that would be this uh, uh, symmetrical of anything else, we can simply just reflect and move over into the right position. Okay, now I don't need to bother to really do in here. It's already shaded anyway, so no, no need to worry about that. Um, but let's go ahead and do in here. And let's do the yoke and collar. 
There's our nice little crisscross, and the rest will be just our regular plaid. Should probably have this zoomed in a little bit more, it would be easier, but whatever. Okay, looking good. Let's get our regular plaid. do mess up on your pen don't worry about it because you can always fix it later and it's usually always faster to just just use the white arrow or the or the black arrow to fix it later than it is to worry too much about it while you're drawing so see that little edge there got brought up too much so I'm just gonna zoom in grab my white arrow and make sure it's white peeking out here too, so let's just fix that real quick. Don't want any bits peeking out. Okay, so there's my warm colorway for my shirt. Um, and I can just, again, it's going to be easiest for me to go ahead and copy and paste these entire, this entire thing. And then all I need to do is make my crisscross um, or bias cut plaid um, and straight plaid um, out of my cool colorways and my neutral colorways and just swap the fills. So really, really easy. Um, seems like an awful lot of plaid. I kind of want to put a solid maybe color in the side now, but whatever. You get the idea. Um, what I probably, the only thing I probably should do is make the buttons a solid color. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to lock layer two, actually, and ungroup. And what should we do? Blue buttons? Black buttons? I don't have white on my color palette. That might be OK. Dragging my buttons out everywhere. I want to try to uh, do a, a mass select, but I'm just messing up my buttons. Sometimes your shortcuts aren't so short, so yeah, I'll just I'll just click on them. I don't think I put my color palette in here yet, so maybe I will just make these buttons white. There's way too many buttons on this shirt too. Can you imagine having to button all of them? I don't know why I made them so small or so closely placed, but because I don't have to make it or button it, that's why. <laughs> ah, the white buttons look cute actually. All right, excellent. All right, so I'm gonna leave you here. Um, I'll come back at the beginning of the next video with a sort of finished version, but um, it's a lot of just repeat of what I've already showed you. So just go on ahead and do your color and neutral uh, or your cool color and your neutral color uh, for your flats. And I'll pick up back up with you in our next video when we do our prints, which are actually going to be um, still a lot of the same and even easier because we've already made our print swatches. So um, no big deal. The only thing we have to do is make them a little bit smaller. So just like our stripes, we have to make our prints a little bit smaller. So I'll pick you up with. Um, pick back up with you in that video. 
Um, so keep a lookout for it. Um, it's up next and we will do our prints then. So um, have a good one. Have some fun um, times creating your stripes and your, and your um, uh, flats. Uh, be creative as always. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.